Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my first news video for 2021. This time we have the KDE roadmap for the year, Nvidia preparing to better support Wayland and ray tracing on Linux, the death of Flash Player and an open source Epic Game Store client for Linux. Let's take a look right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year by phone or support ticket, regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in, which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiments to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Oh, and before I forget, in addition to having great written documentation, Linode also just started their own YouTube channel where you can check out video tutorials and guides, information on Linux cloud computing, and guest appearances from various experts. Check them out at youtube.com slash Linode. Okay, so let's start with the Linux news. KDE published their broad roadmap for 2021, and there are some interesting things in there. The team is aiming for a production-ready Wayland session, continuing on the efforts they put on that in 2020. They also aim to provide full fingerprint support through the whole KDE stack, which means logging in, confirming root actions, and generally replacing everywhere you need a password by your fingerprint, the Breeze theme is also a focus point, as well as a replacement for the kickoff menu and reflowing text when resizing the window in console, their terminal app. This all sounds pretty good, and that's probably not including all the other smaller things they want to work on in 2021, so it should be an exciting year for KDE and Plasma. Linux is now available on some pretty amazing hardware, the Nintendo 64. The project isn't a distribution specifically tailored for the N64, it's just the necessary drivers and bits of code that would allow a Linux kernel to run on that old console. The uses are limited, since that machine isn't really going to be running full-blown Linux desktop anytime soon, but it should help with porting emulators and some games. It's still interesting to see that Linux can run on everything. Now, remember that project to port Linux to the Apple M1 chips? Well, it has a name now, it's called Azahi Linux. The project is not just to make sure that the M1 chip is supported, but also to ensure that using Linux as a daily driver is doable on these machines. This includes work on the graphics part, on the CPU, and to access the shared RAM. This will eventually materialize in the form of a remix of Arch Linux for ARM that will be packaged for installation by users. Interested users can take a look at the official websites or at the code on GitHub. Now, some Linux developers are also pondering whether to remove support for old CPUs from the kernel. There are a lot of older ARM platforms and some CPU architectures that aren't maintained or used at all, and these are being considered to be removed from the releases following 5.10 LTS. I must say I don't know most of these architectures or specific CPUs, but there are some older PowerPC ones and some Spark platforms. This participates in the cleaning up of the code base to make sure the kernel stays lean. People who still need support for these older architectures will still be able to stick to the latest LTS kernel that supports them and will for a long time, so that shouldn't be much of an issue. Now let's move on to the open source news. Nvidia seems to be willing to move forward to support hardware accelerated X Wayland. Nvidia drivers were always dodgy to use with Wayland as they aren't well supported by most compositors and didn't allow for using hardware acceleration on X Wayland, the only real method to play games on Linux if you're using Wayland. This will soon be a thing of the past as Nvidia has submitted a merge request to the X server to, as they say, accompany upcoming support in the proprietary Nvidia driver for hardware accelerated GL and Vulkan rendering with X Wayland. They appear to expect the performance to be on par with nativex.org, which is a good thing. This is probably one of the last missing parts to ensure that Wayland can be used in production by everyone in the near future. The GNOME team has also published a new update on their upcoming redesign of the Shell's multitasking interface. 
This post doesn't focus as much on what's new, as they have already laid out these changes pretty clearly in a previous blog post, but more on the why of these changes. They are pointing out that this design allows for a better discovery of the shell's feature by opening up immediately into the activities view at boot. The redesign will also make using gestures to navigate workspaces with a trackpad a bit easier with a clearer interface. If you're hesitant about the change, you should read the post. It's interesting and it should help convincing people that it's the right move. I, at least, think so. Now, on the Linux hardware front, we have Slimbook that announced a new laptop called the Titan. It's AMD based with a Ryzen 7 and an Nvidia RTX 3070. It has a 15.6 inch 1440p display with a refresh rate of 165Hz. It's interestingly light at only 2.1 kilos, so around 4.2 pounds, and it's made out of aluminum. It also seems like it's full of RGB with a per key backlit keyboard and a front light bar. It's clearly made for Linux gaming and can be pre-ordered with a substantial discount at 1600 euros. The base config has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of NVMe SSD, but it can be configured to handle way more than this. This seems like a beastly gaming laptop that I would love to be able to review. If anyone at Slimbook is watching this, give me a call. Now, in terms of applications, it seems like the death of Flash is finally real. The older plugin has been reviled and cast out since smartphones started poking their noses and creating a mobile web, but now most, if not all, browsers have officially dropped support for it, including Firefox. The browser will end support for Flash on January the 26th, so any version after Firefox 84 won't be able to use that plugin. There won't be a setting to enable that either. It's a good thing, in my opinion, as Flash has been completely displaced by more recent web-based technologies that don't require a plugin and create less security and performance issues. See you, Flash player. I'll always remember your terrible Flash games and your slow websites. Now, Mozilla has also opened their VPN to Mac and Linux users. It's based on WireGuard and runs on a network of servers powered by Molvad, which apparently doesn't keep any logs. It's built as a super private VPN that doesn't store or collect any data about you or your browsing history. It costs $5 a month for up to 5 devices, but it's currently only available in the US, the UK, Canada, New Zealand, Singapore and Malaysia. This VPN is one of the avenues that Mozilla is exploring to expand their revenue sources. It's still locked behind a waitlist, so it doesn't seem the foundation is ready to open it up widely yet, but at least it's now available on our OS of choice for those who would like to use it. And let's finish this video with the gaming news. And first we have some bad news. Mad Max and Shadow of Mordor are now dropped from Linux and from Mac OS. The ports were made by Feral, but unfortunately their licenses with Warner seem to have expired, so they can't be sold anymore. People who bought these games can still re-download them and access them on Linux, but new users won't be able to buy them anymore. It's another example of how stupid this licensing business is, as it deprives multiple companies of a revenue stream. Sure, these games probably weren't top sellers anymore for Linux or Mac OS, but leaving them in place didn't cost a thing, so removing them for a legal reason just doesn't make sense to me. Now, do you have a few games on the Epic Game Store? Maybe you grabbed all the free games that they offer? Do you wish it was better supported under Linux? Well, now you can have a good experience with Epic Games, thanks to Heroic Games Launcher. This open source project gives a graphical user interface to access your library, download your games, set some Wine or Proton versions and launch options, and play the games. It basically gives you the Steam Play experience for the Epic Games Store, all through an open source app based on the legendary command line client for Epic Games. I have tried it, and it really is a great tool. Nvidia released a new version of their stable driver for Linux, which is nothing special except that this new release supports the Vulkan Ray Tracing API. This driver supports a lot of Vulkan Ray Tracing extensions and should improve performance as well, as they increase the OpenGL and Vulkan Shader Disk Cache, which means that there will be less need to rebuild these shaders on the fly. There is still no news on the support of the necessary Vulkan extension for Cyberpunk 2077 though. Wine 6.0 was released after a few release candidates to the end of 2020. 
This new release includes more than 8,000 individual changes and brings all the core modules to the PE format. They now have a Vulkan backend for their Wine D3D implementation, and Wine now supports Direct Show and the Microsoft Media Foundation, all important to play these cutscenes in a lot of games. This new Wine release will be the base for the next major releases of Proton, so it's always interesting to see what's new. Speaking of which, Proton 5.13-5, a minor release, is now out. It brings to the stable Proton branch a bunch of the changes from the experimental Proton branch, including support from the OpenXR Virtual Reality API, a new version of VKD3D Proton, a fix for world sounds not being audible in Cyberpunk 2077, and the ability to play online for Red Dead Online. There are also a bunch of crashes and bug fixes for Gears Tactics, Fallout 76 or Conan Exiles. As always, you'll find this new release directly through Steam. And that covers it for this news video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this one. And if you really want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!